In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Each Sunday we gather here at the Lord's table. Let us begin our prayer by acknowledging our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you invite us to share in your heavenly banquet. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you humbled yourself to live among us. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be humble. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire, and glooming darkness, 
and storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in festal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him. And the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place so that when the host comes to say to you, my friend, move up to a higher position, then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather than you hold a banquet, Invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Gospel contains two teachings in similar styles. Both start with when, when you give a banquet, and when you go to a banquet. Both have a cautionary phrase, don't. Don't sit at the high place, lest you be put down, and don't put out a spread for the rich to impress them, lest you already receive your reward. And both have the teaching, but. But when you go to a banquet, and but when you give a banquet. The Lord here is not playing Miss Manners. He's not giving lessons in proper etiquette. He's teaching us the proper way to view ourselves and others. He's teaching us about honor, respect, and particularly about humility. The first dinner instruction speaks about whom we are before the Lord. We are told that we shouldn't think so highly of ourselves that we put ourselves over other people. Symbolically, we shouldn't move to the best table at the banquet thinking that we are much better than anyone else. A truly holy person would never, never belittle another person. The first dinner instruction encourages us to recognize who we are before the Lord and not to be concerned with making believe we are better than others. And who are we before the Lord? We're people with gifts and with shortcomings, just like everyone else. Our value 
comes from God's gracious gift of his love to us. What matters is what he has given us, not what we can take for ourselves. What matters is where he places us at the table of the banquet of love, not where we think we should be seated. The second part of the gospel speaks about honoring people for favors to come later. The second dinner instruction about not looking for paybacks tells us to be sincere. The Christian attitude should be care genuinely for others, not try to buy them. We need to be concerned with whom, we are, whom others are, not what they can do for us. When we do that, we are honoring the Lord who is present within them. Jesus says, invite those who cannot repay you. This teaching is in direct contrast to what's in, what's in it for me mentality that motivates so many people. Christians are to be different from the people of the world. The two dinner instructions remind us that we are not the center of the world. God is. Our value does not come from how others view us. Our success is not due to what others can do for us. Our value, our success, comes from our relationship with God. That is humility. Our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbled by the realization of God's great love for us, let us now turn to him in prayer. That we may seek to extend the love of God without limitations, conditions, or exceptions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our bishops, priests, and deacons may imitate the humility of Christ, the servant of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the nations and peoples of the world may cooperate in peace and trust, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor may find places of honor and welcome at our tables and altars, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be reassured of the great love of God in the compassionate care that is extended to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of our deceased relatives and friends may be welcomed by God to the banquet in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear the prayers that we make you, O gracious Father. May we give you thanks for your many blessings by living lives that are worthy of your love. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as with it out end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>